Hello class, welcome to lecture three of METR 2023. And in this lecture, we're going to ex sort of expand on some of the st stuff we talked about in the previous lecture as it pertains to the pressure gradient force and uh, how to diagnose pressures throughout the atmosphere. And in this specific lecture, we're going to introduce something called the hypsometric equation, which is sort of a related topic, but we'll also talk about the physical consequences that arise from this hypsometric model uh, that we can incorporate into the atmosphere. So. To start this off, we'll take a look at the hydrostatic balance that we sort of derived in the previous lecture, where we had uh, we had dp d, uh, z is equal to negative rho g, and we saw that we could rewrite that in a form that looks like this. And the reason why I'm keeping the minus sign here is because uh, we're not looking, we're not going from constant height to constant pressure surfaces anymore. When we did that, we had to take the negative sign out. Here, we're still focused on just constant height surfaces. So in this case, we preserve the negative sign. And what we can do is we can combine this uh, equation for hydrostatic balance with the equation of state, otherwise known as the ideal gas law. Pressure is equal to density times the dry air gas constant times uh, virtual temperature, which quick review virtual temperature. Uh, virtual temperature basically accounts for the density differences between moist air and dry air. So dry air is more dense, which uh, gives you a lower virtual temperature versus moist air, which is less dense and therefore gives you a higher virtual temperature. And something that's important to keep in mind is that this temperature is in fact in Kelvin. And then this is the dry air gas constant, 287 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. This is the density of the air. And then this is the pressure that you would expect relating the other factors. So if we solve this for density, solve this for rho, we get this expression. And then what we can do is we can take this expression for density and plug it into uh, the right-hand side of this equation up here, which starts with the hydrostatic balance. And if we do that substitution, we get that uh, this differential in pressure dp is equal to minus pressure over rd times virtual temperature times d phi, which again is geopotential. And if we want to, we can rearrange that equation, put all the p's on one side, and then all the other stuff, well, all the p's and all the other stuff on the other side of the equation will have d phi out by itself. And by doing this, uh, what's technically referred to as separation of variables, we end up with a differential equation that we can now solve. And the way that we can solve this differential equation is just to simply integrate both sides. So that's what we're going to do here. So here on the left-hand side, we'll integrate from some pressure level P1 to another pressure level P2. And then on the right-hand side, we will integrate from some geopotential phi1 to some geopotential phi2. And the right-hand side of this integral is really straightforward. It's just simply uh, phi2 minus phi1. But the left-hand side of this integral is a little bit more complicated. Uh, the dry air gas constant is, of course, a constant. So we can pull that out of the integral and disregard it. But virtual temperature can vary with height. It can vary as the pressure varies. So the way that we sort of address this is we don't look at the virtual temperature as it varies throughout the pressure, the pressure levels we're interested in. Instead, we look at the mean value of virtual temperature throughout the two pressure levels that we're interested in. So if we do it that way, that makes this integral on the left-hand side a lot easier to evaluate. And then also gives us another constant that we can then pull out of the integral. So that's what we get. We replace TV with TV bar to indicate that this is a the mean virtual temperature in between the two pressure levels that we're interested in, which is therefore a constant. And then we can then pull that outside of the integral to get a result that looks like this. So we get minus RD TV bar times the integral of DP over P is equal to, again, the right-hand side, this integral, really simple to evaluate. That's just phi 2 minus phi 1, geopotential 2 minus geopotential 1. And now that we have these constants pulled out of the integral, that makes the left-hand side, this integral on the left-hand side, a lot easier to evaluate. Integral of dp over p, that's just simply equal to, uh, first of all, rearrange it. But the integral of dp over p is, in fact, natural logarithm. And technically, it is natural log of absolute value. But in the atmosphere, we don't deal with pressures that are below 0, which is not really physically possible. So we can sort of neglect the absolute value and just leave it uh, as just a regular logarithm with no absolute value bars. So that's what equation looks like so far. But we can do some things to simplify this and make this a little bit easier to work with. So I'll just carry the same equation over. Uh, one thing we can do to simplify this has to do with this negative sign and this natural logarithm here. We can use a property of logarithms where you have the negative log of x over y. You can simply rewrite that using the properties of logarithms to be equal to positive 
log of y over x. So if we apply that property to the logarithm that we have up here, negative natural log of p2 over p1, we can rewrite that as positive natural log of p1 over p2. So that way we don't have to worry about the negative signs so much and, you know, uh, we found that it's really easy to drop negative signs in, the, in some of the previous lectures. So if we can disregard that completely, that's really nice. And another thing we can do with the left-hand side to get something that's a little bit more physically meaningful is we can substitute in our equation for geopotential, where geopotential is equal to the acceleration of gravity at ground level times the geopotential height, which is given by capital Z, which is to denote it from uh, a regular height, regular distance above the ground, which is usually notated as lowercase z. But if we plug, make that substitution in, and if we plug in g naught z for each value of phi on the left-hand side here, we get g naught times geopotential height 2 minus geopotential height 1 is equal to everything on the right-hand side of the equation. And then if we want to, we can divide through the equation by our acceleration due to gravity by g naught to get z2 minus z1 is equal to the dry air gas constant times the mean virtual temperature divided by g naught, the acceleration due to gravity, times the natural log of pressure 1 over pressure 2. Where it might be useful to keep in mind that z2 is the geopotential height of pressure level P2. So let's say pressure level P2 might be 850 millibars, then z2 would be the height that we would expect to see 850 millibars. And similarly, Z1 is the height of pressure level 1, so let's say pressure level 1 was 1,000 millibars, then Z1 would be the geopotential height of that 1,000 millibar level. And then, of course, TV bar is the mean virtual temperature between the geopotential height Z1 and the geopotential height Z2, or you could also say that TV bar is the mean virtual temperature between P1 and P2, again, keeping in mind that virtual temperature sort of accounts for the moisture content of the air, so that we don't have to worry about uh, partial pressures of uh, moist air versus partial pressures of dry air. It just combines it all into one nice, simple equation. And of course, g naught is acceleration due to gravity at ground level, which is a constant 9.81 meters per second squared, or roughly constant. And then Rd is a dry air gas constant, 287 joules per kilogram per kelvin. So, that end result is the hypsymmetric equation. And another thing that might be worth bringing up is this term right here, this coefficient that appears in front of the logarithm, that is sometimes uh, read, written as just a single term, capital H, which is the scale height, or the more specifically the pressure scale height, and that's the height at which the pressure falls by a factor of 1 over E as compared to the surface pressure. So if your surface pressure is say a thousand millibars, then the scale height would be where you would find 36.79% of that thousand millibar value. So if your scale height was 8,000 meters, which is usually what it's roughly in any given atmosphere, that's roughly the value of the scale height. So if your pressure level is a thousand millibars at the surface, then at the scale height H at 8,000 meters, your pressure would be roughly one third of that surface value, which should be around 368 millibars, give or take. So that's going to do it for the introduction on the hypsometric equation. In the future segments, we will talk about some of the physical consequences that arise from this hypsometric equation and some of the applications that it might have. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.